Hello, and again, welcome to the next level, how TDMs and conveyors can advance mining methods. It's being presented by Steve Mating, our Cutter's product manager and Zach Fox, mining engineer. It's a complimentary webinar in association with Tunneling Journal. As Suzanne mentioned, I'm Desiree Willis. I'll be your moderator throughout the webinar and during the Q&A session at the end. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our first speaker of the day, Steve Smating. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Steve Smating, and Desiree said I'm the product manager responsible for all the cutterhead consumables here at the Robbins Company. You may be wondering what the difference is between tunneling in a mining environment compared to tunneling in a normal civil construction setting. In short, there virtually is no difference, except that in civil construction, the goal is to produce a hole in the ground, whereas in the mine, the excavated material itself can be the goal. Today's webinar has been broken into several sections. First, I'm going to talk about the history of TBMs in mining and the pros and cons of using TBMs for mining. Later, is that I'm going to talk about applications and case histories and they show a short video of continuous conveyors. Well, we're having our first technical difficulty here. Our slide won't change. Okay. Well, we jumped a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, this section will address some of the reasons for using the tunnel boring machine. Resource demand is up and continues to rise, and prices for metals are extremely high these days. Gold at $1,700 an ounce, silver $30 an ounce, platinum at $1,600, palladium at $700. With prices like these, it's the mine's advantage to develop the mine and excavate you as quickly as possible. As you'll see later on in this presentation, the excavating and the PPM offer significant speed advantages in the world of glass. Coal still provides much of the world's energy, with 42% of the U.S. naval electricity production coming from coal in 2011. All the easy to get minerals have been exploited. Now we have to go further and deeper and search harder to find new ones. With most rare earth metals aggressively mined in only one country, other countries need to develop the imports and resources to stabilize the world's supply. Such elements are often difficult to reach. Uh, there's a long history of uh, tunnel boring machines being used in, in uh, mining applications, actually. The picture on the left is a gold reef miner that was used in South Africa in the 70s. This very small machine was, was used to follow the very deep and very thin gold reefs found in South Africa. Stillwater mine in Montana and the USA is probably the best example of tunnel boring machines in a mining environment. They were an early adapter of TBMs and they continue to use it to today. Zach's going to touch on that topic in more detail later in his presentation. On the right is a picture of mobile miners, similar to the one that was first designed for monoids and mines in Australia, and later a second one that was built for casmical mining, also in Australia. The advantage of the mobile miner was that it could excavate a tunnel with a flat floor. Both of the mobile miners were delivered and used early to mid-1990s. But the conclusion with these mobile miners was that a full-face tunnel boring machine is far more efficient than a mobile miner because it could apply more disc cutters to the rock simultaneously and actually you can have to advance the tunnel more quickly. Okay, I'm the, uh, I'm the cutter guy, so I'll have to take an opportunity here to talk about how TBM actually cuts the rock and why it's such an efficient way of cutting rock. This simple illustration shows the first cutter penetrating the rock and forming cracks as it passes by. Later, another cutter passes by and the chip forms and falls out after the cracks join together. So very simply, that's, uh, that's how you cut. We talk about cutting the rock, that's really not the right word. 
rock is actually paying the attention rather than compression of the chip forms. Uh, and on the picture there, you can see what some typical chips look like. In this diagram, you can see the pressure is going directly beneath the disk. This is where the rock is pulverized. The large chips to either side are formed by tensile play over the rock, not by pressure. Virtually 100% of the energy used is expended crushing the rock directly to the disk. Virtually none of the energy is used to form the chip. To put that another way, the larger the chip is formed, the more efficient, more energy efficient the rock cutting would be. This principle is the essence of 2 dm cutting efficiency. Finally, the disk itself has what the industry calls a constant cost section. That is to say that as the, as the disk surface will contract with the rock, wears, the width of the disk stays relatively constant and applies uh, relatively constant pressure to the rock. So this section will uh, discuss some of the advantages of combined machines and mines. Different skill sets free up skilled miners for ore production versus the, the development of access heading. Operating a TBM requires a small crew of skilled operators. However, the smaller crew size reduces operating costs and the time needed to find training workers. Another advantage is that utilities are installed behind the TBM to support the boring operations. And these utilities become mine infrastructure later. That means the rails, water, electricity, air, and uh, ventilation that are installed to support the pump boring machine will become useful in the mine later. Tunneling operations can run around the clock in a much more steady state operation than drill and blast. There's no need to stop production from blasting, ventilating, or mucking out. The diagram shows the tunnel tunnel heading advances much faster than drill and blast. The table shows a typical break even point if you're if you're comparing TPM versus drill and blast. Even though the tunnel boring machine starts an entire year later in this example, it catches up with the drill blast tunnel and after about 4,000 meters. This is, this is very generalized, but it gives you an idea of the faster rate of advance of a tunnel machine. Another advantage is the surface of the tunnel is much smoother. There's no overbreak due to blasting, and in general, there's no need for scaling after boarding. Because there's less overbreak, the need for roof bolting or other ground support measures is also much reduced. Further benefit is the airflow is better around the smooth openings, so this reduces the power need for ventilation, and you get an improvement in, uh, in the airflow. Safety is much improved. The, the number one is, of course, there are no explosives in the production area. TBMs are always equipped with very efficient dust removal systems. The tunnel boring machine does create a lot of dust, but, but uh, we're able to control that quite effectively. So less dust means healthier lungs, less silica, in general, a better work environment. Although, as mentioned, a board tunnel is most likely to need ground support. Ground support equipment is designed into the TBM, and ground support is normally carried out as the means machine advances, so there's little or no effect on production rates. From a safety point of view, workers are protected by the structure of the TBM. Carry ground support operations. They can stand underneath the, uh, the roof supports and, and uh, be out of the way of any, any falling rock while they're installing ground support. So we've come to our, uh, our first poll question here. I'd just like to know how many people have actually been involved in the specification of, uh, or in the use of tongue boring machines in a mining environment. And while people are voting for that, we have our first question. How much experience do you have in the TBM industry? Well, I've been here in, in this company most of my adult life. I've been here very near 30 years. The first half of that I spent in the engineering department. The second half I spent most of it in, in project management. Most recently I'm responsible for uh, all the consumables on the cutter deck.
Okay, I guess we'll move right along here. Okay, we've got some results here. Actually, uh, about two thirds of the negative result. One third had the, I guess most people don't know too much about something in a mining environment. Okay, this section is going to address some of the limitations of the boring machines. One of the, one of the biggest limitations is, is the length of time it takes to get a tunnel boring machine onto the job site. It takes much longer to manufacture a TBM than it does to work here to drill and blast it with it. The manufacturing period can consume the better part of a year in some cases. However, this time is normally used to prepare the starting area for the TBM. The starting area is more complex and expensive than what would be required for drill and blast. Transport time from the factory is also a consideration. Uh, transport time to the mine. And then reassembly of the equipment is, is time consuming. But to mitigate that, Robbins has developed a system we call OCTA, which is an acronym for on site first time assembly. We use this method to shorten the time between an uh, order for a bit of and then boring action starts. What the OCTA system does is eliminate the assembly of the equipment in the factory. TGM is assembled for the first time at the job site. So the elimination of the shop assembly time more than compensates for the slightly longer assembly time on the job site. In general, TGMs are only effective for long tunnels. They're not really suited for short nerves. There are several reasons for this. The high initial cost can't be justified over a short distance. TGMs are much more expensive than fuel glass equipment. As shown in the, in the diagram previous to the long cycle time is a disadvantage where the bore is too short. TBM method would not be faster in the case of, of a short drive. Additionally, at the end of tunneling, the disassembling time must also be accounted for, whereas drilling glass equipment can be quickly removed from the tunnel and set up again at another location. On top of that, the heavy, awkward pieces are not easy or quickly moved between the end of one drive and the beginning of that next when you're using the tunnel bore machine. The simple state of the advantage of this method is evident for longer, longer tunnels. TBMs are ideal for long straight tunnels and tunnels with general horizontal and vertical curves. The standard radius is about 300 meters per thousand feet. Tighter curves are possible, but they must be planned for in the engineering phase while the TBM is under design. Short curves present other problems. Support equipment behind the TBM called the back deck becomes far more complicated than small radius tunnels. Standard designs can't be used in this case, and special measures must be taken for conveying the spoiler through the back deck. Another consideration is that TBM can't be focused strictly on the ore body itself. TBM is designed to cut one diameter so it can adapt to the changing shape of the ore body. And if the ore body changes direction suddenly, the TBM is not able to follow because the long turning radius of the membership previously. Another consideration is that all all of the excavated rock is taken out in, in one uh, one uh, lump. The TBM can't separate the ore from the spoil. TBM is typically much larger than the ore vein, so you, you have a lot of waste rock mixed together with, with the ore. This needs to be separated in another operation. Well, we'll come to the full question again. What's your opinion of the overall efficiency of TBMs and mines? And while people are answering that, Steve, we have our second question. What are some examples of successful mining projects that have used TBMs? Well, Zach's going to touch on that uh, a little later on the presentation, so I'm not going to comment to too much, but uh, the Stillwater Mine in, in Montana is a fantastic example. Uh, Magna, Magna Copper Mine that was, uh, was using tunnel boring machines in the 